It's going to take one hell of a conspiracy theory to get me to stop cussing. Content is explicit. You have been warned. Welcome! You are listening to Be Witch Panther, where two best friends, one skeptical, ahem, Amy, and our resident believer, Krista, talk about all the universe and its divine powers, or what I would call bullshit thinking. <laughs> I thought you called it magical thinking, but that's okay. Well, that, that too. Yeah. <laughs> We're all uh, in the same wheelhouse right in that wheelhouse spooky the spiritual some wacky religions cults and the paranormal and i like to bring us back to earth and talk about how science debunks most of what krista believes in and once again (laughs) this bitch needs to heal her chakras so (laughs) let's get spiritual today uh we are covering something really cool and you found it so credit to you my friend of people's political affiliations tied to their beliefs in the paranormal and i'm really excited i've got a lot for us okay let's hear it uh all right ames you're first i guess gemini you can reconnect with people who you know from many different lifetimes now and now Alice barking (coughs) fucking fabulous this is our life Please, baby girl, you are so fucking good. (laughs) Holy Jesus Christ. All right, just lay down, baby. I don't really have much. I don't really have much faith right now. I I do. I have a lot of faith. So we're going to get through this. Gemini, you can now reconnect with people who you know from many different lifetimes. New people who seem very familiar can appear, but also people you know who will feel very new and very different will reappear. This is all... (laughs) <laughs> a direct result of your changes and your path. Okay. That so, was a little bullshitty. I'm not going to lie. That one was even for me. No, but one part does apply. Really? <laughs> well, the part of meeting different people, because I've had the weirdest fucking Uber drivers this week. I had a, a guy who was MAGA. <laughs> he told me, he's like, the FBI has been going after Trump for five years and they can't find a thing. And I was like, well, don't you think the justice system takes a while? Because you hear about like someone getting accused or going to court, and then it's like 10 years later, which is like huge uh, true crime news for all the people out there that, is it Anod from Serial was released? Oh, Adnan. Did I did it. How did I miss Adnan, that? Yeah. Wow. Really? I'm going to go read that yeah, after yesterday. this. Holy shit. Well. Oh, and then. Okay. Matt, the driver you told us about. It gets even weirder. <laughs> Today, yes, this guy. Also, Bewitched Banter Mugs, courtesy of Dr. Sis, who we'll be discussing today. Any hell. (laughs) (laughs) Today, some guy wanted to talk to me about the magical powers of cacao powder Uh... and how you could pronounce it different ways. And then on my ride home, this guy was telling me all about how he rides bulls. And he was, like, showing me videos, and he got... He was knocked unconscious. What? The other night. Yeah. And he's like, well, he's like, yeah, people say I'm crazy, but it just teaches me how I could be better at things in life and persevere. And I was like, okay, you get it. <laughs> wow. Okay. So if Bye, apply, and tomorrow, what are you applying to this? <laughs> I mean, I could read that into anything, mm-hmm. though. I don't think it actually applies, but I just wanted to bring up all my weird uh, Uber drivers I've had lately because it's exhausting sometimes talking to people and you're like i don't know how to keep up this conversation because i'm just tired and i want to well i remember (laughs) yeah when i used to uber about weird stuff to cronkite same thing they i'd get a lot of mega people and i'd be like "Uh uh-huh and to your point no no space or energy to argue it's like 8 39 in the morning i'm like i'm out like don't talk to me about this shit when i'm just trying to get to work thanks (laughs) like no well, most Uber drivers I have are like super nice and uh we don't usually that's like the first time I've really had one talk politics with oh, me. Most of the you. time they avoid it. Lucky you. All right, what's in my horoscope? Duh, it's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> oh, was I supposed to have one no, ready? It's in our intro. 
Oh, <laughs> I was like, I did not look up horoscopes. No, no, no. It's right next to yours in our right below our intro. Oh, okay. I see it. Okay. Um, you are looking at yourself. You're reevaluating yourself. You're reestablishing a relationship with yourself. You can bring yourself something beautiful now from your invisible world, and you can transform your lifestyle in a meaningful way. That's a lot of you, 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 I mean, you, duh, you, you, what you. I say is all about <laughs> me. <laughs> Actually, yeah. that is a... The horoscope must understand. It is a very negative Libra trait, but whatever. I own it. I don't give a shit. And anyhow, I, that actually does apply, and I know I'm applying things grandiosely, but um, as you know, I went to Sedona this weekend, and a lot of that same thing of like just going within to like forgive and heal came up, so... Anyway, I'm about it. Working on your inner demons. Literally. A lot of them to to fucking dispel. So, <laughs> um, all right. Are y'all ready for this? It is really cool. It is a little academic. So, anyhow, again, first I'm geeking out because it's really like – really related to like what I do and love. So like journalism and being an educator and media literacy, it it ties into a lot of that. Um, Even though this is actually an academic paper, but I will do my damnedest to break it, break it down layman style, because as you know, neither you or I are scientists. So (laughs) (laughs) do we even need to say Um, that? (laughs) Anyhow, again, this topic was inspired by you, um, but nonetheless, I have, again, tried to simplify the concepts for the purpose of the podcast. So if you need an explainer, just be like, you can use the raise your hand feature like our students do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just cut in and ask you. I'm not going to raise my hand. <laughs> of course not. But anyway, this came from a paper like you said or like I said academic style in college by a fella named Tyler Ferrari whose uh, senior thesis was called paranormal beliefs and their effect on the American fears and political identification he wrote this in 2018 for a poli sci class at Chapman University which is in I think central coast of California if I'm not mistaken where you got engaged anyhow Tyler, good old Ty Ty, <laughs> he does a really good job of setting up his academic paper in a little bit more of a narrative way for us lay folks. And he really just reminds us that America kind of started all on propaganda and conspiracy theories. Obviously, us, we patriots rebelling against your King George the <laughs> Third. <laughs> and um how dare you and it really stemmed from obviously higher taxes and all the bullshit that they were trying to do from across the ocean or across the pond and there we had enter, enter yellow journalism which frankly is the foundation of journalism sadly um and propaganda and um that what's yellow journalism it's uh slander essentially and smut like think of no offense the british tabloids well, I don't think American ones are much better. <laughs> no, but like Briti- Britain ones or British are so fucking mean. Like, y'all don't give a fuck. We talk about this all the time, how y'all are very direct and like fuck people's feelings. And um, the, Br- the British media is extra harsh on celebrities and people in power and fame. So either way, you're right. We have just equal smut. But it did start here in the States. Well, it didn't start in the States, but we used it heavily in the States to basically write bad shit about your opponents. And that's yellow yellow journalism, writing in untrue or unfair things for the purpose of political gain, i.e. Okay. So basically like Fox News. Essentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So anyways, welcome to America. And I preface that because a lot of what we're going to discuss today it shapes all of our worldview and our cultural lenses. So we're already at our birth of America, like skeptical as fuck of the government and big corporations and things that are like just big ass organizations we're skeptical of because of thank you, the monarchy. (laughs) Not small ass corporations, (laughs) just big ass corporations. There's no such thing as a small ass corporation by nature. (laughs) 
I know. It's just funny how you oh, describe it. Well, okay. Big ass Big corporation. Ass titties. Um, <laughs> no. Okay. So now that that's out of the way. Um, we obviously know I'm the believer. You're the skeptic. Um, but as long as we've been doing the podcast, which is almost a year, holy shit. Um, that is true. I have really learned like healthy skepticism and I'm really proud of that. Um, I will never give up my metaphysical beliefs and the benefits of healing like from within, like mind, body, spirit, meditation, never giving that shit up. But I am still questioning all things. And based on this research, I sometimes wonder because I question things, maybe that makes me like more conspiratorial. I don't, I don't know, but we'll get to that. Maybe we'll get to that. Um, so to start the entire topic, it was very first, more importantly, to, to define cognitive dissonance. And we need to understand this because it's how and why people have beliefs in conspiracies or the paranormal. So I think we talked about this a little bit this weekend, but do you know what cognitive dissonance is? Or have heard it, I'm sure. I've heard of it. I And I've came across it mostly through research, through the podcast. But right now, I couldn't tell you shit about Bug Marty. <laughs> per usual. We have to have it one every episode. <laughs> we don't know shit about Bug Marty. Uh, but on Wikipedia, um, it's the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as it relates to behavioral decisions and an attitude change. The second definition from Very Well Mind is uh, as stated by the American Psychological Association that cognitive dissonance is an unpleasant psychological state resulting from inconsistency between two or more ele- elements. So, so you're basically having conflicting exactly. thoughts. Exactly. Would you like to hear some okay. examples? Yes, I'd love to. Pizzagate and lizard people at the top of my list. <laughs> <laughs> but it, real talk um that's that's just a very obviously personalized example of like not that i believe in that pizzagate nor lizard people let me clarify but other folks in our podcast sphere do <laughs> so well tom yeah tom will come what and up, talk tom? about it sorry i don't mean to laugh at your beliefs from strange brew yeah broski's over there okay a few more examples that are less political all right, so I'll trigger warning on the, all these real life examples. You want to be healthy, but you don't exercise regularly or eat a nutritious diet. You feel guilty as a result. Me. <laughs> Next, we know that smoking or drinking too much, wink, wink, this weekend, uh, Sunday night, RuPaul. Woo, woo. Um, that was, it fun, was so though. fucking fun, <laughs> but I went a little overboard, which literally canceled out both of our days yesterday, at least mine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we know that drinking too much is harmful for our health, but we do it anyway. And we rationalize this action by pointing to your high stress levels. Oops. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I did it again. I got drunk at RuPaul's I made you believe. Um, Okay, so you'd like to build up your savings, but tend to spend extra cash as soon as you get it. Again, me. You regret this decision later, such as when facing an unexpected expense that you don't have the money to cover. Uh, last one. I feel like we all we all <laughs> want more savings. Oh. <laughs> uh, so last one. Uh, you have a long to-do list, but spend the day watching your favorite shows instead. You don't want your spouse to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to make it look this. like you've worked hard all day. <laughs> to be honest, That's like I me. didn't even read that example. <laughs> that shit is so fucking funny because I see both of your bitch asses doing it to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like me frantically cleaning the kitchen oh, earlier. God, I'm dying. That's a good one. <clears throat> okay, so what influences cognitive dissonance? There's different degrees, um, and you can it can depend on a few different factors. Uh, among them, uh, how highly particular, high, high, how highly a particular belief is valued, and the t- degree to which the beliefs are inconsistent. So the overall strength of the dissonance can actually be influenced by the following. 
the importance of the attached belief. Cognitions that are more personal, such as belief about oneself and are highly valued to the to self tend to result in greater dissonance. So for example, you and I telling each other, ourselves that we're fat, right? We talk down to ourselves all the fucking time, despite when we work hard, like we, we have to retrain our brains to be nice to ourselves, essentially. Mm-hmm. It, the second factor is the number of dissonant beliefs. So the more clashing thoughts you have, the greater the strength of the dissonance, which again, I think is maybe why I'm such a... Uh, we'll get into it in a little bit. Conspiracy theorists. Like I'm way more conspiracy theory believing than you are, I feel. Um, But it's because I have so many different things that are competing for the truth for me. So like, obviously I have my metaphysical beliefs and then I have my, my scientific beliefs because I know what's that science exists. And it's, it's, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that lends me to being more of a believer. I don't know. So wait, can we go back to the first one? So the first one, if you have like an elevated self-image, you're more likely, or if you have a lower self- Oh, sorry. If you have less self-esteem, then you're more likely to believe, have more cognitive dissonance. Yeah, so actually could go either way. So I just was using our like, talking down on ourselves as an example, but essentially the first one says that the more personal, whatever that belief is to you, the highly va- and the more highly valued that belief is to oneself, you're going to have higher dissonance or disconnection with, with what's really real. So for you and I, we need to see ourselves better. But for a narcissist, they actually internally hate themselves, but outwardly project confidence. And that's obviously conflicting. Does that make sense? Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> good, en- good enough. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Moving on. So I know you read a little bit of this but pretend you didn't (laughs) so oh i didn't read the article at all i just read the headline and sent it to you so based on that and this topic today of your political beliefs as tied to your paranormal beliefs or not Mm -hmm. who do you think in the political ideologies like would be more prone to believing in paranormal things oh i did come across that so sorry i know the answer to that it's democrats which i was highly I could not believe because it seems like Republicans are more conspiracy theory theorists. So let me let me large. tell you. Actually, the real answer to the paranormal, according to this research by good old Tyler at Chapman University, independents are the most likely to believe in the paranormal, which I consider myself. So, whereas Democrats are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories than Republicans, which is a little weirdly. How new is that study, though? Because they new. looked at the news in the past two and, years. And so to be fair, it is new. He did. I should have disclaimed this to you. It was in 2018. Um, they actually it was published in 2018. Excuse me. They did the study in 2017, right after the election. So there's some things we'll get to why Democrats are very mistrusting and rightfully so. So timeliness, he does weigh that out as like a disclaimer of like, so this might influence Democrats leaning to distrust as in like, the Trump presidency. That makes sense. Cause everyone thought the, uh, I mean, we didn't think the election, what results were fake, but we knew there was like the Russian influence. Exactly. And like the Republicans stopping the vote. So I feel like everyone was mistrusting government. At that exactly. Point on the Democrat side. So I could see the influence and I wonder if they did the study today. Cause everyone thinks Biden didn't, well, not everyone, certain individuals <laughs> don't believe Biden won. Right. I won't admit it. So I wonder if they would be fall more on that spectrum. Yeah. I mean, anything to, again, going back to cognitive dissonance is what it is. They know that's not true. All the facts, all of the results, the tabulations, the investigations show no evidence of fraud, yet they're still spouting this bullshit. It's really scary. Well, it's like, it goes back to like COVID. Like you... There's pictures of people, videos of people dying, and then they're like, it's not real. At a certain point, you're just like, I think even like the experts just want to throw their hands up and be like, fuck it. They kind of did at the end. They're like, we, we tried. I, yeah. It's so sad. I actually have a friend uh, and colleague whose mom was a non vaxxer and she did pass away. And it was really sad. Her and a I lot know. of them. And she was so pissed at her mom because she's in, in news like us and in media. And she was like, mom, this is the acts but her mom mistrusted and sadly passed away so anyway 
And I feel for the family members like your coworker who's now left to mourn their mom the rest of their life. But it's like, oh, my God, come on. Honestly, I just didn't understand. I was like, even if the vaccine doesn't work, just take it and hope for the best. And also, if you're going to talk about chips in our arms, well, guess what, bitches? They're already watching us and every angle of our phones and speakers and devices. Like, come on. Don't give me this bullshit. They're already tracking yeah. us. Get over it. There's my conspiracy. Yeah, well, they were posting that <laughs> from their – they'd be posting that from their cell phone from to their to Facebook where they're tracking Exactly. You. Fucking stupid. Anyway, um – I wanted to take a side note real quick because, again, I'm an independent and I definitely would consider myself a low level conspiracy theorist. Not that I believe in any of the QAnon bullshit. I, what I'm trying to say is I believe in like government. I just don't trust the government. So anything to do with that. Who does? I, I, well, it depends on the circumstances. We'll get to it. There's different things that this survey tested, which I thought was fascinating, which was, I mean, it was paranormal beliefs, conspiracy theories, and real life fears, like natural disasters or an economic crisis. And those are the three things this survey test or this study tested. And again, so I believe in the paranormal, always have, always will. And, um, a really fucking scary documentary happened and I bring it up because it was a disappearance of a very, very savvy outdoors man, young man. And it was called um, horror in the high desert. And I thought it was just going to be like my normal dateline and like murder stories and hiking kind of thing. But actually what it came out to be was this guy was a survivalist, extreme survivalist, very young, went out in the woods, remote, 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 remote locations. And on one of his expeditions, he found this really creepy cabin and he came back cause he had like, he has like a blog of a crazy amount of like 50,000 followers way more than we have right now. So get it. God rest Gary. But anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, he uh, found this cabin in the woods and told, wrote it on his blog. Hey guys, you won't believe what I found. It was horrifying. I'm never going back, but his followers. What state are we Nevada, talking about? High desert in Nevada. Okay. And these people were like, bullying him they cyber bullied him and saying you're going back we don't believe you until you bring back video video evidence or photographic like some type of evidence that you found this or give us give us the map and he said i'm not giving you the map because a i don't give unexperienced hikers that license to go essentially die if you don't know what you're doing and b he was mm-hmm. so terrified of what he saw that he wasn't going to go back but they cyber bullied him into going back he found his way oh my god it's so fucking scary and there's live footage or not live. There's real footage, raw footage of what he was doing uh, or capturing on in night vision because he was so terrified of being uh, detected by this thing that he saw. And then it, you see this like, Oh God, it's like a Michael. Why did he go at nighttime? That just seems stupid. Uh, great question but <laughs> if you're so terrified I, you know like, what i'm so was? terrified of this place i'm gonna go it, when there's no sunlight I think it's because he didn't want to be seen so that's the best i can give you because he was a brilliant survivalist so i feel like it must have been something about detection but anyway it pops out in like the corner and you see this thing with like a machete and it i kid you not it looks like uh michael myers with long indigenous hair it and and it's <laughs> so fucking scary dude and then all of a, at the end, you see this thing attack him, and then you see its face in the camera. And uh, essentially, what it turns out to be, we think, or they think, what is a very deformed person, mal- like maldeformed human that chose to live off the grid because of probably being made fun of. And so this this person murdered this poor guy, Gary Hinge is his name, and he was only like 30-something years old. And this person stole his truck found it 50 miles back and moved it to like get the cops off the trail. And wow, yeah, it was so fucking scary. And then they must have been somewhat in society at some point because a, they knew how to drive a car and B they chopped off his, poor Gary's hand and put it in his backpack and left it on a actual populated hiking trail. So this person, whomever they are, like they must be familiar with some type of level of civilization, but it like the deformities in that screen was fucking terrifying and i bring it all up to say while he was missing for about i want to say two months to five weeks there was all sorts of conspiracy theories like it was a witch it was a 
ghosts. It was a government mm-hmm. conspiracy, UFOs. But all his 50,000 followers then were like shh, pouncing on this conspiracy theory. Turns out, again, he was unfortunately murdered by a deranged person living off the grid. Damn. But it, That's yeah, dark. it was, but it was so fucking, t- I had a nightmare about it last night, actually, because just that face was like fucking horrific. But anyway, point being, maybe that's why they, if the person looks that scary, maybe that's why they don't want to be in public. Yeah, that's kind of what uh, <laughs> some of the reporters were saying that were on this documentary. And I, I want to look up the footage to like, just, just fact check again. It's all about finding the facts today uh, to see if it was mm. real, really real footage because it was a little bit of a jankly made documentary. I'm not going to lie, but regardless if it was phony footage, they made that shit look real, real and real scary. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, but watch any video today that, I mean, pe- there's the technology out there. Yeah, that's true. To do, that's to do so that. true. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't be amazed if it was believable. Cause look at the movies we have today and like animation. Yeah. But anyway, it was scary as fuck, but I move on. And again, just all that to say, watch it. Cause it was really well, do- it was well done, even though it was like the production value sucked, but the quality, mm-hmm. but the, Storyline was very well done. Anyhow, okay, so conspiracy theories galore <laughs> in many things of paranormal. Uh, lots of associations and enmeshment with the two. But anyhow, I'm going to go back, bring it on back to Tyler's hypotheses of his paper. And he has a great summary that asks us about people's influences in their beliefs and political identity in their political identification and ideology and are there correlations again with their political id with the belief that the government is hiding the truth about aliens or what have you you name it Mm -hmm. 9-11 sandy hook and my you know uh, you name it or and or (laughs) do their political identifications or parties rather have them more likely to believe in a certain disaster like terrorism or an economic downturn. And he says that understanding this is crucial, essentially, because we're now more skeptical than ever in anything that's a massive agency like the government or media. And um, as you know, I've always said this, media is the fourth estate, and unfortunately, it's not doing a great job uh, and hasn't been for quite some time. Well before Trump, anyway. Also a really sad day in Arizona today, Roe was about to be overturned. I I didn't see the headlines if it was officially, but I'm going to assume it was here in Arizona. So, Oh, I didn't know that was today. They were voting on it or meeting about it. So it's going to happen soon, sadly, if it hasn't already. But in that case, my sister said, bring, keep your next one on in. (laughs) So don't get, you should. (laughs) Anyway. Okay. So back to political views. So this is from the survey, the study that Tyler found overall, conservatives uh, tend to believe in the paranormal. Th- paner- bleh, can't speak today. Conservatives tend to be those who believe in paranormal phenomena like ghosts, cryptids, and aliens. And he does point out in his paper that this also includes conservative Democrats because there are some conservative Democrats as well. So even though we mm-hmm. associate this term conservative a lot with Republicans, he pointed out. It did include conservative Democrats. Okay, moving on to said Democrats. They tend to believe in conspiracy theories more so, as I said earlier. And independents are more likely to believe in paranormal phenomena than they are to believe in, or or about equal, sorry. Their level of belief in conspiracy theories and paranormal phenomena are about equal. And they were the most highly respondent in both these areas about of all the three parties. So um, as in believers, so independents overall represent the biggest belief, if you will, biggest believers. I mean, that makes sense. Don't I you think, think so? Cause independents probably form more their own beliefs and structures mm-hmm. of, beliefs. I think so. I, I could, I don't. Yeah. Then the, I think I have a little bit more on that later, but it's just so fascinating. Cause I, I fall into that category, actually, (laughs) obviously. So Mm -hmm. anyway, so here's some data. I'll make it, I swear it's not that academic that I made it. I made it (laughs) for the little people. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Okay, so again, the study was compiled in 2017. And it was out of a Chapman 
survey of the American fears. So they do this annual study, Chapman University, of all American adults or of whomever participates, American adults. In this particular study, they had 1,207 participants all across the country. And the paper makes a very clear distinction between conspiracy theories and cons- political con- uh, conspiratorialism or conspiratorial politics. And as, as like a basic layman's thing, again, conspiracies at a whole are just taking a really, really complex human idea or things we don't mm-hmm. understand and boiling them down to s- such reduced oversimplification that may or may not have any political ties. Okay. Kind of like, uh, well, we talked about that in the cults episode, like cults, a lot of people who join cults is because they're like trying to find the easy answer to the yep. problems where most of the time it's not like there's a, just an easy solution, like snap of your fingers answer to like, why am I depressed? Like, oh, take this blue pill. You'll be all good. But really, it's like you need to work on yourself. It's going to be like a long journey mm-hmm. type thing. So, exactly. Yeah. Um, I mean, the blue pill I might wish. work sometimes. <laughs> yeah. The blue weed gummy. Always. Always. Yes. <laughs> so finally, um, on this note, conspirator- conspiratorial politics is the purposeful mis information, propaganda, and use for the sole sole purpose of influencing government affairs and political opinions in whomever's pushing out the information. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so someone's gaining something, where the conspiracy theory, maybe someone's not gaining anything from it. Yeah, yeah it's, it may or may not be political. Um, but he wanted to uh, also point out the difference because... Also, conspiratorial politics is like more, it's just, I think, a little bit more nefarious. Obviously, look at us today. QAnon, the election fraud, fucking misinformation, malinformation, you name it. Fake news. I mean, it's just, it's all circles back. <laughs> it all connects. Everything mm-hmm. fucking connects. That's why I was geeking out on this research. I was like, oh, my God, this is my life. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> um, okay, are you ready for some really cool data points and the quest- some of the cool questions they asked to th- uh, nearly 1,200 Americans. Yes, let's hear <clears> it. <throat> this is on the category of, and the category is, I'm going to be RuPaul for a minute, <laughs> uh, <laughs> paranormal or odd beliefs. So this question says, please indicate your level of agreement with the following statements. Aliens have come to the earth in modern times. Bigfoot is a real creature. And places can be haunted by spirits. The next questions they asked for conspiracies, category is conspiracies. Mm -hmm. The government is concealing what it knows about, let's say, alien encounters. The government is concealing what it knows about, let's say, the moon landing. Okay, and that's conspiracy category. The -hmm. next category is realistic fears. All right, so please indicate your level of agreement with these statements. The United States is likely to experience a large-scale terrorist event such as 9-11 in the near future. Ugh. And how afraid of you of the following events? An economic or financial collapse. Ugh. Yeah, that one I got me, to be honest with you. Yeah, that one's the most likely to happen in my yeah. book. Yeah. You know what's funny? I didn't see anything about environmental collapse because we're obviously fucking ourselves up with that. But mm-hmm. anyhow... Oh, okay. Just a quote from Tyler regarding these questions. Quote, specifically, these questions regarding conspiracies about the moon landing and alien encounters were chosen because these conspiracies have persisted across the decades and have become ingrained in American culture, which allows the experimenters to gain a better, better responses from the survey respondents, end quote. So essentially, to encapsulate more people based on demographics and age, they they mm-hmm. put it back to the 60s when all these other big ass conspiracies started. They put what back to the oh, 60s? Questions of like conspiracies that were starting in the 60s. So like the moon landing. Oh, so like if you were talking to an old person, you'd be like, ask them something about what happened. Exactly. In the 60s. And, and giving not only getting more sample size, but also like people who lived through these conspiracies to see if they believed or not kind of thing. Okay. That makes sense. And giving that they were around longer, it's giving the conspiracy more time to breathe, if you will. Right. Too. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Here's the results. Drum roll. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> Category for paranormal or odd beliefs. Independence, when asked uh, if aliens have visited the Earth in modern times, independents were 29%, 29.8% likely to believe. Republicans, 245 and Democrats, 23.3%. Wow. So pretty close. Not like a huge disparity. Yeah. Not number. too bad in, in aliens. Well, pretty much we all think something's fun- funky in the universe, <laughs> no matter what our political party is. When asked if Bigfoot is a real creature, independents agreed that 19 po- uh, 19.8%, Republicans, 143 and Democrats, 138 who believes in Bigfoot? People really do. Do you? No, absolutely not. Why? Really you have don't. lots of crazy other beliefs. So why is that so out- outlandish? That- <laughs> mm, Are you on your high know. horse for people who believe in Bigfoot? Yeah, fuck you, Bigfoot believers. Yeah, but <laughs> I can believe me. in other crazy <laughs> things. <laughs> I can. I don't know. It just seems like we would have found skeletons, like we have dinosaur skeletons. I don't but know. maybe they're in like they're hanging out by that scary cabin where that deformed man Dude. is. Dude, honestly, that I, that was one of the, did I say that was one of their conspiracy theories too? They thought it was maybe a cryptid or Bigfoot type thing because uh, it was super scary. The guy left a barefoot print uh, footprint next to Gary's truck. See, there it you was go. So scary. Bigfoot, he's real. But, uh, from you, not me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to <clears throat> believing that spirits can haunt locations. Yes, please. <clears throat> no, we know that. <laughs> Half of all party affiliates believe that spirit spirits can haunt locations. I'm not surprised so, by that. In, in your face, Billy. Well, it doesn't mean anything. (laughs) I mean, the majority of the population can be dumb or are you dumb as fuck? (laughs) Dumb as a motherfucker. (laughs) I don't think it means anything. The majority of a lot of people out there aren't really with it. Well, this, according to the scientific data, um, also does a little disclaimer saying that um, when you compare the two parties, Republicans are more likely to believe in paranormal phenomena only by a small percent over Democrats. But it's so negligible that, like, they're basically on the same level, Democrats and Republicans, of believership, whereas independents are like, what's up? Shit is real. And that's me. So that tracks. I mean, I would assume, but maybe it'd be interesting to know how much religion plays into it, because I would assume less religious people are Democrats. And more religious people are Republicans. And I feel like more religious people are more likely to believe in like spirits and aliens and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he doesn't really touch on religions in this paper, but I am curious about that, too. And and again, to be fair to his research, he did say this is um, one of the very few studies out there that that's trying to correlate political affiliation with paranormal beliefs Mm -hmm. so they've done obviously a lot on cognitive dissonance a lot on americans beliefs in the paranormal we know that america majority of americans do believe in paranormal things um but he um again is one of the first to like make a study about correlating politics and paranormal i mean that's probably a hard study to complete yeah he had a bunch of like methodologies which beats the hell out of me how to read those frankly yeah and you don't need a you don't need a i think that would put us to sleep (laughs) what it put me anyway i was amazed that i was able to pull this together and i'm really proud of myself no i'm proud of you too because i looked at the article and i was like this is very academic (laughs) it really was is okay moving on to conspiracies category results him Independents, again, were the most likely to believe in conspiracy and specifically the conspiracy that government is concealing the truth about the moon landing. Hmm. Independents, 31.5%. Republicans, believe it or not. You know what? I have a comment after this. Okay. Independents, 31.5% believe the moon landing was fake. Republicans, only 17.4% believe so. And 
Democrats much higher than Republicans here, 25.4%, wow, I believe. Wow, interesting. Um, and I think that's because Republicans are typically, America, fuck it, you know, and like the moon landing was such a big celebration of um, patriotism in our country mm-hmm. that I think that's why Republicans are maybe be- don't believe that it was fake. That's a good theory. I could follow that. Oh, thanks. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you the scientist in house now? Yeah. Researcher? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So moving on. Uh, when asked uh, if the government is being truthful, truthful about aliens, mm-hmm. once again, independents hold a very high <laughs> gap in believing over Democrats and Republicans at 44.3%. Uh, believe that the government's lying about aliens, lying ass motherfuckers, which we know I believe it based on our UFO episode. Anyhow, uh, Republican 36.3%, Democrats 38.3%. So, pretty high. Finally, we're getting into the real fears category, i.e., climate change, science stuff, and shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like actual things that could happen in the world <laughs> versus uh, paranormal beliefs. Or like more likely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, more likely of questions. Okay, so when asked about their fear or belief that another 9-11 type of event will happen soon, independence were not as high. Uh, Republicans came in the win on believing this as 70%, independents 60 and Democrats 545 Okay. I mean, that's tra- similar theory here because Republicans are like, yeah, America. Well, and also not saying all media is not guilty of this, but like, I do think all media is like the fear mongering, like everyone's out to get us. But I feel like the Republicans do that or Fox News does that more about like foreign countries where. Oh, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Progressives kind of realize we need to be more feel, fearful of like domestic terrorism, but they don't realize that. Or care, you know, g- gun violence. No problem. I don't <laughs> even know if they don't care. I just think they're so, a lot of them are so misinformed. Like they're just not getting the real information. Like it's interesting when you hear even the Uber driver the other day, I was just like his perspective and his reality of the world is so different. And it's probably because we've talked, we talk about this all the time, but it's like that what he's consuming is not telling him all the facts. So he's not really like to him, that's the reality where we're also going to different news outlets and getting a different reality. So God knows what we're missing out on. Cause I think we're all guilty yeah. of it. So for sure. I mean, I, I think well, and that's part of all uh, cognitive dissonance and the, even bigger problem with app as, uh, services and apps like Apple News and Google News because they're just feeding you what you already believe, and that's a big problem in media lack of me- media literacy. Well, one hundred percent, yes. People want to hear and they want to have their beliefs confirmed, so they seek out like TV talk shows, news, social media that's going to reconfirm what you believe, and yeah. I, the gun thing to me is crazy when I, some conservatives start posting about like how we need guns to protect ourselves. I'm like, just the logic. I'm like, I don't know. How could, why it's, do you think throwing yeah. more guns at the problem is going to solve the problem? That one I, I, I don't understand. Like arming like, teachers? I, I that is ridiculous. Oh my God. Oh, wait. You know how many deaths would happen more if, if like, children got a hold of that like goodbye or if a teacher is pissed off like timmy i told you to shut up how many times like i'm sorry i don't trust every teacher either no way and well all the shit you guys do with in general or you dealt with it like of course they're gonna fucking snap or not even that or if the teacher takes the gun and like uses it for self-harm i'm just like it opens like the pandora Mm -hmm, box like why would we want to and we can barely fund schools, so now we're all of a sudden we're gonna get buy all these weapons. Moving mm. on, but yeah, that's you moving on. I'm depressed as fuck as always. <laughs> okay, 
Last question asked in this category and last category in general, economic fears. The results were a little bit more evenly distributed on all three parties here. Republicans are less likely to believe that an eco- economic collapse will occur that in the near sense. future. Right, because they have all the fucking money and they're cheap bastards. <laughs> but no, it's because they care so much about conserving their own fucking money. Um, well, and, and Democrats... About oh, them. Sorry, Democrats are most likely to believe that it's coming soon, which we just had of discussed. That's weird. Um, so, yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> I'm depressed now. <laughs> as fuck. Um, <clears throat> in conclusion... More Americans today believe in conspiracies across the board. Um, and even in the study, they 10% of all of the participants, again, across all parties, mm-hmm. believed it in all eight presented conspiracies, even when one was a fake one in this survey. So wait, say it again. So, um, sorry, I didn't follow taking that. the whole, the whole wath of servants, which are surveyors, excuse me, which was what? 1200 people more or less from, of Americans across the country mm-hmm. of Democrats, Republicans, independents, 10% of the whole sample survey believed in all eight conspiracies that they were given. Oh, like presented with. Okay. I see. So they presented Even them when th- one of them was fake. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised by that either. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, point being, we all have vast miss and distrust as the government. Um, and it's, it's, it's crazy. And um, again, the data is variant, but Tyler, to your credit again, he does state that further research really has to be done to fully understand the intricacies of your beliefs and your your party affiliation. Um, but to what you're just talking about, we're all just burnt the fuck out. And like, again, seeking information easy, quickly, or just to confirm because we're so goddamn tired to do the research on something else down another path is so exhausting well even if well not to cut you off but like oh yeah you know even if you have the energy like the top a the time or you care enough because there's certain things that are happening i when would i have the energy or care to go research it yeah people are lazy today and that goes along with i don't think that's being lazy i think that's just it's not your priority i feel like you have other priorities like uh, advancing your career, spending time with loved ones, uh, doing things that make you happy. That's not my top of my list to go research what they tell me in the news. I don't think that's being lazy. I, just, yeah. I think that's priority. My priority is not to sit there and be like, oh, let me fact check this today. <laughs> let me set aside <laughs> an hour to start fact checking everything I no, heard I, on the I news. I get that point. I get that point. Um, but it isn't taught either to my point and it needs to be media literacy. So anyway, um, Anyway, to quote Tyler's paper, <laughs> to wrap this shit up, we're all fucked. Uh, <clears throat> but to quote <laughs> this, uh, this distrust that can be extremely dangerous once a disaster strikes and the government failing to adequately crush conspiracy theories with complete truth only further inflames pe- these people into not trusting their government, which hurts this country overall, end quote. And once again, in conclusion... We're all fucked. But do your homework, even though it's work, like Amy said and pointed out very poignantly, it is work, but it's really, really important to not get complacent. And it's ironic. Today I had this conversation when I saw a CNN headline of um, the Georgia people being in their election booths or like uh, the people that were supposed to be overseeing the Georgia election results were mm-hmm. like somehow there. I didn't read the full head or the full story, but I looked at the headline. I was like, oh, fucking course they were because they were there to disrupt it somehow. And that's where my brain went because of my beliefs. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't trust Republicans, you know, go figure. But um, I don't I, know how anyone does no. at this point. 
But anyway, so I, me and my colleague were watching the same headline at the same time, and she goes, ugh. And I, you know, I'm like, I'm so exhausted. And she's like, I know, but so don't do that. She's like, that's what they want. Do not give up. And you have to always be curious and, and not get given to the fatigue of, of finding the truth. And that's the moral of my story today. Yay. Well, good job. <laughs> I, it'd be cool if we could reach out to this guy and tell him we did like an episode over his thesis paper because how honored would he probably be? Oh my god, we should. Yes, Tyler, we're gonna find you, I hope. And hopefully we did was... it justice. <laughs> oh my god, I probably fucked it all up, all the data. So be honored to have you on to correct anything I got wrong if you're interested. So he's, thank you. He's probably like, I can't <laughs> talk to these ladies. <laughs> these dumb bitches. These dumb bitches. um but anyway that was really depressing as always so um positives i don't feel that depressed honestly what i don't know i feel like did you take more shrooms no (laughs) i just feel like you just basically in a nutshell told me there's a lot of dumb people out there and i was like i already knew that so i'm not that sad (laughs) well yeah that's the truth i'm not like the survey um, like or this study is like oh my god we're screwed i was like just confirms there's a lot of stupid people out there yeah and i mean we've stupid or lazy or both or misinformed which isn't always everyone's fault but yeah it's uh depresses me but uh i'll let you be depressed for the two of us because i feel okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll give a positive. Let's see. Amazing weekend in Sedona, which was all ooey gooey and like everything I needed. So I thought you were gonna say RuPaul. To- uh, and RuPaul too. Okay. That was yeah. Both Saturday and Sunday were like just really awesome days. Sweet. So. Um, all right. So my positive. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of good things going on, but I'm just blanking right now. <laughs> <laughs> I um, will say you I got promoted. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> From what? <laughs> no, just on your resume title. <laughs> oh, shh, be quiet about that. Uh, just kidding. I'm going to Flagstaff this weekend, so that's definitely a positive. Oh, you are going? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, we got a hotel, nice. and we booked oh, that's a right. dinner yeah. for Saturday night. I'm excited. It's going to be like a uh, – have you ever been to Tinderbox? I need to get on Tinder, but no. Anyway, it looks fancy schmancy, so it'll be da- date night. We're going to take the dogs. It's going to be – I need to get on Tinder to open my box. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like how you turned my restaurant into something sexual. <laughs> well, it's not my restaurant. <laughs> uh, my restaurant. Uh, but yeah, my, it's my positive. I can't wait to go hiking, relax. Uh, other than that, life's been pretty peachy. Nothing too crazy going Yay. on. Uh, sweet. Well, um, yeah, just busy as fuck, but good as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and depressed as fuck. <laughs> Well, today, this reporting was, like, a little bit, like, I don't know. What? It just It's just a concept that I always talk about, and I just feel like nobody cares. And it's really scary, because without media literacy, we're all just going to be fucked, you know? That's with so. a lot of things in life, though. Like, global God, warming. I'm poly positive today. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Is this orange theory glow? It is. <laughs> I don't know. The cult the cult of orange theory that you have now joined. It's got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we say awesome. peace be witches? Peace be witches. Bye. Thanks for listening. Check us out on Instagram or bewitchbanter.com. Suggestions for the show? Emails at bewitchbanter at gmail.com. Credits? Music Phantom Fun by Jonathan Boyle from premiumbeat.com. Podcasts edited and produced by Krista Hins and Amy Holt. As always, if you enjoyed, please rate, review, and subscribe.